One of the normal or common questions that I've been recently been getting is about fear, fear, stress, worry. Uh, and this is a common element of living in the Middle East, uh, especially if you're an expatriate. And it's not to say that uh, if you're an Indian and staying in India or you're a Pakistani staying in Pakistan, uh, that there's not going to be any stress. However, uh, the stress is exa exasperate, exact, can't get that exact word here. The stress is, <laughs> like I told you, the, these are just random. Uh, so do excuse the imperfections of them. Exasperated, I think. Ex okay, whatever, I'll get the right word. Okay. So they, they are just multiplied many times over when you are in a foreign country. The reason being is you, are you know you're a second class citizen or you're just an expatriate uh, having a visa uh, the laws may not support you or uh, the, like in the middle east the biggest problem is if you don't have a job you are asked to leave the country uh, if you don't get a job let's say when you have a job you have a visa but if you are without a job you are asked to leave within a period of a month that is if they cancel your visa and if you're in bad terms with the owner, then, you know, you'll be asked to leave as soon as possible. So, many people, many expatriates, what they do is they continue sticking to the job even though they don't like the job. There are so many people in uh, the Middle East who stick to a job even though they don't like it. Uh, this is because they don't have an option. Let's say, for example, you are in your home country you don't like the owner or you don't like the job. You can just resign, go home, sit in your house, relax, recuperate and tell your spouse, uh, you know, I just resigned from my job. Uh, you know, let me take a couple of days off and look out for another job. So there you don't need, you know, you're not held like a slave towards a contract. But in the Middle East, what happens is if you don't like the job, or you don't like the owner, or you don't like your colleagues, or let's say you're just fed up, you're just burnt out. You cannot leave, you have to continue because um, if you leave, then you have a duration before which you have to get another job. Or in many cases, they don't even allow you to leave. They say, um, you know, they can play around and say, we spent so much X, Y, Z on your visa, on your training, you need to compensate us for that or they'll make a legal issue, or they'll just make you dance around without canceling your visa. And what can you do? Especially when you are a normal, average, everyday earning guy. You can't compete with a company. Uh, you can't compete with their resources. They are uh, PRO. Um, they are staff that speaks fluent Arabic or the people who have connections in the ministry. And then even if you decide, okay, I'll take them to court or I'll file a case against them. Do you actually have the time and the resources to keep driving back and forth to the uh, government departments, get uh, documents translated, hire the services of maybe even a lawyer? Um, and then the question is, if they decide to prolong it and take it for one, you know, three months, six months, I've known cases where they've even taken it up for two years with the dispute. Can you afford to lose all that money? Uh, can you bear all that stress? So, these are some of the challenges that people in the Middle East face, expatriates. The stress, the stress, the pressure, the fear, uh, you know, the, it comes all under this, this one heading. So, the question is, how do you fight this? How do you manage this? What do you do? Now, uh, I can only share with you my experience of what I've done. So, it's not going to be like... Uh, uh, this is this will work for everyone, but I'll at least give you a perspective, and uh, you can see what works best for you. So now, what you first need to accept or understand is you're in that situation because of the decisions you have taken. So the first thing is taking responsibility. That means you're responsible because if you didn't take the decision, you wouldn't be there. 
Nobody forced you to sign the dotted line. Nobody forced you to take a plane. Nobody forced you to come down to UAE or nobody forced you to, you know, work for this company. So you did it on your own accord. So the first thing is taking personal responsibility and saying, yes, it's because of me. And the, why this is important is it gives you personal accountability. It makes you feel uh, and makes you realize I'm in charge of my life. Whatever is happening, I'm in charge. And if I want, I can make the change other way. So the first one is don't play the victim card. Don't uh, say, oh, God, where are you? Oh, why is my luck bad? Or, you know, why does this always happen to me? Or why me and cry and sob? Uh, avoid that bullshit. God is, you know, let's keep my atheism aside because I'm an atheist. Uh, God is not sitting there just looking only at you and saying, oh, okay, which company did you work for? How much money did you get per month? Uh, and my default answer to those who believe in God is, if there is a God, they wouldn't be suffering. Uh, that also for innocent children. Okay, innocent children, they wouldn't be suffering. They wouldn't be tsunamis. They wouldn't be floods, famine. They wouldn't be good people, uh, you know, getting into bad things. So anyway, that's another question for another debate. So the first one is personal accountability, taking charge of your life and not positioning you as a victim. Like I said, this is entirely unscripted. You see, I don't have any script in my hand. I'm just holding the uh, stand, selfie stand. The second thing is, this is what I did. Um, after taking personal responsibility, the second part is, if you cannot think clearly, you cannot take an action properly. So... What I realized is it was very important for me to be able to think clearly and take proper actions. And especially like, I'll give the example, uh, when I was deported from uh, Dubai, I know many people use this Trump card, oh, you got deported from Dubai, that's why you're bitter against Dubai. Well, uh, I got deported in 2011 for reporting this company, which makes fake degree certificates. They're still there. Huh? They make fake degree certificates in UAE. So, because I complained about them uh, to the CID and FBI, along with emails and everything, and I also sent it to media companies, somebody uh, from the ministry or the police or the media sent the owner the same email that I had sent them, you know, with the fake degree templates, the pricing list. You can get a PhD in Dubai, in UAE. You can get an MBA you can get any degree attested to migrate or get a job. And this is happening across. You can check some of my videos. I've even shown degree photographs. And one Twitter user has even exposed people's names for people who have fake degrees. So after I reported them, this guy put uh, terminated me, put a false case on me, and through his influence managed to get me out of the country. But if you check my video, 2011, Lloyd Macedo suicide, I thought of killing myself, but then I said, no, I need to live my life. So I decided to come back. I got this ban removed. So if I was a criminal, if I was actually deported with valid evidence, I wouldn't be able to come back. I came back in 2011 and you can check my Facebook and see 2011. I came back 2011. I got, uh, you know, TED talks. I spoke at TED talks and my life started there. And within the six years, I made my money. And I decided, okay, I had enough of UAE. So now coming to the second part, that is thinking clearly. How do you actually think clearly? That's, uh, you know, when you're under stress and pressure, you cannot think clearly at all. Your mind is just numb. You are totally lost. You would not be able to, you know, you just want to do something, but you are paralyzed. And then your body is in pain. Your mind is in pain. Your heart is in pain. You're not able to sleep, eat, nothing. So it's very important to think clearly. So one of the techniques that I suggest for thinking clearly is, um, I always keep a notebook and pen or pencil near my bed where I sleep, okay? And uh, make sure that you have proper sleep. Like the room should be quiet. It should be really cool below the temperature. So your body just decides to shut down and recuperate. Uh, avoid any noise, avoid any music, avoid looking at your phone. Okay, and lie down. It's always preferred to lie down flat. 
so I keep my notebook and pen next to me. And uh, before I sleep, there's always this tendency to think about the problem. So I allow my mind to freely think about the problem. It's like I'm going through a movie. I'm actually thinking of the problem. Let's say, for example, I don't have a job. I don't have any money. So I give my mind the question, okay, I don't have money or I don't have uh, a job. What will I do? So obviously the mind will replay like a movie, solutions, uh, arguments, problems. And eventually as you're thinking and you're thinking and you're thinking, you'll just go off to sleep. This is the normal tendency of how people under stress behave or act. So once you go off to sleep, there will be a time when you wake up. So when I wake up, I generally, I never check my phone. When I wake up, I open my eyes and I'm just still lying down on the bed. I remember my notebook and pen is next to me. So what I tend to do is any thought that comes to my mind, any idea, any thought, even if it's a fleeting thought, even if it's just a random thought, I take my notebook and pen and I jot it down because that is my clear mind talking to me. Okay. Maybe it's a bad idea. Maybe it's nothing. Uh, I just jot it down. So like uh, going back to the example I gave you when I was in India, after when I woke up, I had a small, that time I had a small notepad, flip, flip paper with my pencil in my pocket. So when I woke up, I just, uh, the thought just came, send all the people that you know, send them emails or get in touch with them. All the people on my phone, uh, even my enemies or whatever. So that was one of the thoughts that I got. And I found that really, really strange because I normally only used to get in touch or contact or interact with people who are my contacts. So I took this idea and uh, so I'll, I'll come to that. I'll come to that example. So write down everything that you have inside. Okay. After that, uh, obviously you get up, you freshen up, you have a shower. Uh, but what I tend to do is after I wake up, the first thing that I tend to do is what I'm doing now. Uh, do some form of physical exercise, anything. It can be 20, 30 push-ups or 10 push-ups, squats, sitting, standing, some kind of physical activity or just walking up and down the stairs. In my case, I just do three rounds. That's hardly, I think, uh, 200 meters. Uh, so it can be like one kilometer that I run up and down uh, in uh, without my shirt, as you can see, uh, because I like to sweat a little bit. Uh, remember, it's very important to exercise, very, very important not to have six pack abs. See, I don't have six pack abs, I have normal. It's uh, we are designed to move. We are designed to exercise our body, our muscles. If you do not, um, you know, your body gets affected. If your body is sick, then your mind cannot work. You cannot function. Like, for instance, if you had a stroke or you're physically sick, your mind can never work properly. So. It's very important to get the blood flowing. It's very important to have a healthy body or at least a body that has some movement. And most important is oxygen. You need to breathe in. Breathe out. What I tend to do is I checked various methods, various um, you know, studies. Many people say you must breathe through the nose. Many people say breathe through the mouth very fast. Uh, the method that I adopt is the Win Hof method, W-I-N-H-O-F, where I breathe in deep as much as possible. I hold and then fast. So I breathe in like either through nose or through the mouth deep. It'll make you lightheaded, huh? mind you. If you do not have enough oxygen in your system, your body or your lungs, and you're not used to it, that means you're not breathing to your maximum capacity. You would feel a little dizzy, you'd feel light, you'll feel like lightheaded. And that shows that you need more oxygen. So I breathe just 10 to 15 times a day or whenever I'm stressed out. Breathing helps. You just breathe in and relax. Breathe in, hold, let go. You know, so see what works for you. Keep in mind if there's any doubt in what I'm saying. Uh, whenever you faint or whenever you're in the hospital, they always give you oxygen. So the first one is air. Without air, you can't breathe. So after you get up, um, exercise. Do some exercise. Nothing great. Do something which you can do even if you 
they're feeling lazy okay breathing is important after that obviously take a cold char don't have a hot char have a cold char i've experimented with hot water i've experimented cold water i've experimented sleeping in a bathtub filled with ice uh i've tried all that the more cold it is the better it is because your body just gets like a shock just to wake up so the heat outside that is for running and keeping your body uh, just get a little bit of sweat and blood circulation and then cold water <coughs> to you know recharge your system and you will feel amazing yes it's uncomfortable people always like a hot shower they like to feel nice soapy and all that but uh, i say i'll tell you through experience that's another topic for another discussion have bath in cold water colder the better so once you're fresh once again don't check your phone don't check anything go back to the problem in hand and this is where you have written down the problem at the top it should be a very clear question like uh, let's say for example um how do i get don't put how do i get more money put how do i get 10000 dollars per month put it something practical and related to you don't put some bullshit like how do i become a billionaire or how do i uh, you know earn millions every month no if your salary was 5000 but how do i earn let's say 6000 dirhams every month as a salary okay so put a specific question related to you that should you know that should make sense and then after you put that down keep putting the idea So, coming back to, I told you that when I was in India and I got deported, uh, when I asked my mind, what to, what is the solution? It gave me just contact random people in my list. So, long story short of that, I contacted people I did not know, not a single one, all, whether I knew or didn't know, everyone I contacted. The funny thing is, I got solutions, I got help. I got offers, I got recommendations, references from people I never knew. Like they say, na, when you're in trouble, it's unknown angels who come to you. In the same way, unknown people came to me and helped me. Unknown people I never knew were not related to me, strangers. Even one of them was my enemy who hated me the most. He actually helped me. So, you know, like I told you, it gives you clarity of thought. It gives you something uh, to do. Now, the next point after this. okay you got up you wrote down things you uh you know you wrote down things you uh, uh wrote down ideas you did your exercise all these things okay fine And what is next the next part for this is which is the most important is do it like you know mikey just do it many people they only think and they talk but in uh, what i tell people or i tell my clients who are who pay me money for my coaching or guidance i tell them that find you have a you have a game plan now work the plan let's say you want to lose weight you wrote down all the ideas how to lose weight run 5 kilometers a day eat only vegetables avoid sugar but now you need to do it If you just write down on a sheet of paper that you're going to lose weight or you wish to lose weight, you're not going to lose weight. You actually need to do it. So, what I always recommend is, especially to my clients, is after you've written down that list, choose one action, the most important action to do, which will jumpstart your day or which will answer your problem. Now, here I get a question. People ask, "Why? Which action do I do?" what do i select from the lot uh can you help me and i this is where i give them a simple answer very simple ask yourself in the list of things to do let's say for example you want to lose weight and in the uh list of things to lose weight you have written down 20 things okay run uh start fasting whatever choose one now the question is which one the do the one activity just one that will leave everything else in that list uh you know like of second importance so always choose the most important action and the question you need to ask yourself is what is the one action that i should choose from the list that would make all other actions seem irrelevant 
So in my case, let's say uh, if I'm creating a YouTube video, I put down all the topics that I want, all the questions, and I ask myself, which is the one topic or one question that if I were to answer only this, the rest of all the topics would be unimportant. So I go as per my brand or my work. Let's say you're looking out for a job um, or you're afraid of losing a job or you want to change your job. Write down all the solutions there. Okay, look out for another job. Apply to 10 places. Ask your contacts for references. Revamp your resume. Uh, get professional coaching. Choose from this whole list. What is the one thing, just one thing that if you did, everything else would be covered or everything else is redundant and do that one action. Now, that action may not be the one you like the most. It may not be the one you uh, find most popular, but it'll definitely be the most effective. Remember, the, ex the point of this exercise is to help you get a solution, not to uh, make your life easier or to make you happy, okay? So, you know, as of now, I covered the first one that is having a proper sleep. Then obviously when you get up, you write down your notes. The second one is uh, doing the first thing that you do is exercise and breathing properly. The third one is cold shower and then sit down and write down a plan of action and then choosing that plan of action immediately. Do the first thing. Remember, your mind is fresh. Do the first thing first. Okay. And last, if not the least, out of all these things, the last option, which I recommend is don't try to do everything by yourself. Now, uh, just like you, I have also done so many things like uh, trying to lose weight by myself, by watching videos, by reading articles, by seeing this promotional. I lost uh, uh, 60 kilos in six day, you know, six weeks with rock hard abs, eating everything that I want, six pack Chang, you know, that guy, uh, which is all bullshit. Then, uh, you know, how I succeeded, how I earned money, uh, short term courses, oh, I'm living the life of my dreams, sign up for this course, or how I managed to get 1 million people signing up for my, uh, coming to my website, organic traffic, you know, so I've gone through all this bullshit, okay? This is all by myself. What I realized is if you try to do by yourself, you'll not succeed. It's like the best example that I can give you is a fly, you know, a small fly. It's, it sees this window and outside this window, you can see the forest, you can see the grass, you can see everything. So what this fly does is go straight ahead fast through the window. But obviously we know what will happen. It'll bang its head and it's like, it tries, 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 tries. So it follows the analogy of try, try till you succeed. But we know that no matter how hard a fly would try, it can't go through a glass. So in the same way, you trying to do everything by yourself, trying the same old techniques or trying new techniques is like a fly going through a wall, okay, a glass. So don't try to make your CV by yourself. I know you. the first thing that will come to your mind, yeah, a lawyer is trying to market his services. No, you don't have to come to me, okay? Go to somebody who is more successful than you who will help you, anybody, okay? Uh, but it should be someone who has some interest in you, has some reason to help you. Uh, like your mother and father, they love you. They would obviously want the best interest for you. But your mother and father is not a good idea because they don't have the expertise. So go to someone who has the expertise, but who also genuinely is qualified enough to help you. So uh, don't, like I was saying, don't try to make your resume by yourself. Don't try to look at some YouTube channel or some article Okay, use keywords, change your paragraph, tell the employer what he wants to hear, uh, you know, put an amazing photograph. All this anyone can tell you and everyone's doing it, I'll tell you this. And the second part is don't tr assume that if you go for the best, the cheapest solution is the best solution. This is a very Asian or Indian mentality, the cheapest and best. They'll go to Nadia's or they'll go to some LinkedIn or Fiverr, pay hundred dollars or two hundred dollars or ten dollars even in some cases five dollars and try to get a new resume i mean ask yourself since when did industry professionals start offering their services for five dollars or and when you when you apply to these companies like nadia's and linkedin do you seriously think 
an industry professional, a guy who knows the industry, is sitting like a sales uh, executive or customer service agent for, let's say, 500 to $1,000 income per month and sitting and making a resume. Most of these companies, they give you a copy paste. They give you a copy paste template. There are softwares, there are programs. Uh, I have gone through the whole list to study my competition. They'll give you these amazing uh, stats that your CV right now, as for our analysis, what analysis, what software, what system, is 30% market penetration with 7% people opening it. We can change your CV where you'll get 80% market penetration and you know almost uh, you know 70% uh, emails will be opened. That's all bullshit they'll give you. And they'll give you an amazing jazzy CV, beautiful colors, um, some copy paste work. So don't do that. Ask yourself the best one. See, if you don't want to come to professionals like myself who have been doing this for years and years, then go to, let's say, a general manager or a CEO, someone who's very successful in your family, someone who's very accomplished. Request them to help you. Request them to guide you. Give your CV to them and tell them, sir, what should we change? And sit down with them and create and craft a new CV, a proper one. In my experience, creating and crafting a proper CV takes anywhere from two weeks to almost three months. You need to sit down word for word, study word for word, sentence by sentence, and it should fit your profile. It should be a permanent change. And uh, in today's day and age, with the amount of competition that is there, the amount of free information, it becomes very hard to stand out. So, um, the last uh, part of the solution which I told you is make sure that you have a professional to guide you. Whether it's losing weight, whether it's your health, whether it is, you know, uh, migration to a different country, choose the world's best professional you can get your hands on. Not someone who's all hype but someone who can actually guide you. So guys, I hope uh, this is one way of uh, dealing with your problem where stress, pressure and fear is concerned. Remember, if you want to deal with stress, pressure and fear, being afraid is not the answer. Praying, some people say, oh, I pray to God and all that. Okay, fine. If it helps you get a solution, go ahead and pray. And that's all with praying your hair grows back or you get money raining down or some magical job coming to you. Praying is only a temporary relief. It's not going to help you. If you want worthwhile to do things from meditation to a little bit of exercise, meditation also five minutes, few minutes, to uh, you know eating healthy, breathing, uh, being in the company of right people, um, taking worthwhile mentorship or coaching from, like I told you, an industry professional. And last but not the least, you taking personal accountability, personal responsibility and deciding I will make the change in my life and I'll make things happen. So if you decide this and you take uh, guidance from a professional, I can assure you that uh, maybe you'll not get exactly what you want, like, you know, 100% success, but your chances of succeeding will be way beyond, way beyond than what you do if you're yourself. So I hope this video uh, gives you some insight into how to deal with fears. Remember, everyone has fears, everyone has problems, everyone has stress. There's not a single person on this planet who doesn't have that. So I hope this guides you and helps you. So guys, uh, do let me know questions. If you have any questions, any comments, any ideas. And uh, I'll always share a video, random video like this every day. Share my thoughts. And let's get the ball rolling. Like, share, and comment. Take care.